Starting out with this program, we did not have the necessary resources uh, to really get the systems that were needed. And by jointly working with other community health centers through the Health Choice Network, we were successful in getting funding first through the state to support our efforts, and then other institutions. Sure, I, I got involved uh, with the network uh, through my affiliation with one of the centers, Delhi Health Centers in Southwest Florida. I was uh, their director of finance and MIS. And uh, at the same time that we were looking at systems and going through the conversion in the mid-90s, focused on practice management systems, uh, there were three Miami centers uh, that were also doing the same thing. And they chose their system and we chose our system. And uh, several years later, uh, we, the, the groups came together and said, uh, this really is, uh, we should figure out a way to do this together. Uh, that instead of each center having their own uh, hardware shop and their own training, their own support, uh, their own backups, their own disaster planning, uh, that it would be much more efficient to do it together as a network. And uh, in about 1997, uh, those four centers came together and uh, implemented the uh, centralized IT system. So it's been amazing to watch our growth as a network. It's been amazing to watch the doctors take full ownership of this technology. Um, EMR was not an IT, as much as I want to say it was an IT project, it was not. It was a clinical project. The physicians asked for certain benchmarks, for certain goals, and we were just able to produce. Um, it's been amazing to watch. We started out with four, I'm sorry, with five founding health centers, and now we're up to 32 health centers. Uh, we're in Florida, New Mexico, Utah. We have partnership agreements with Kansas, Iowa, and Hawaii. We are working with New York and others. Uh, and there's other networks out there that we're partnering up with because we believe our intent was never to take over the world. Um, actually, we don't do any marketing or sales. They've actually come to us and said, we hear you're doing this. We hear you're creating reports on a monthly basis for all physicians. We hear you're working on disease collaboratives and you're not using the, the national standard uh, database. You create your own. We hear that you have interfaces with your dental electronic health record system and your paperless uh, medical record system. Um, we hear you're working on a behavioral health care system. Um, we hear that your fiscal GL interfaces are all together. So finance knows what's going on on the practice management side. Um, so it's been very interesting to watch. Uh, we've been called a national model for many years now, and uh, it's, it's really been a great ride. Of course, there is no completely developed system on the market today. So we're in the process of development, and the program is evolving as we move forward. And we have seen improvements in systems as we have implemented the electronic health record and electronic core health record within our organization. And so I, I think just a tremendous number of uh, benefits, many tangible and some intangible, but uh, certainly being able to share uh, competent IT staff, a, a chief information officer, uh, training and support programs, having uh, a group of uh, IT professionals at the network that know not only the, the systems very well, but also know community health centers very well. And what they're able to respond, I think, very quickly and very appropriately uh, to questions and issues that the centers face. Well, technology, technology allows us to have immediate access to everybody's notes at the point of care. And so if I want to know what the dentist did, what prescription they, they wrote, you know, what the, this behavioral health provider is prescribing. If the dentist um, discovered an allergy, I have it right in front of me sort of thing. Um, if the, the psychiatrist wrote a medication against which I should not write another medication, um, I can tell, I can, I can see that. And even if I didn't recognize it, the system would tell me that, hey, these two should not be prescribed together, for, for example. So that integration has been, has been priceless um, in making sure that we have all the information on a patient and necessary decision making at a point of care. Well, our physicians, our community health centers, are truly champions. We had the benefit of having physicians that recognize technology as a means to an end, as a means to not being able to see a, a patient or a child without a medical record in front of them. You ask any physician out there, they'll tell you, oh, we've never seen a patient without a medical record. I was in charge of health information and management, which is the medical records department. I can prove that we saw a lot of patients without medical records back in the old days. Uh, records were lost, paper gets misfiled. Uh, so our physicians were truly the ones that carried the torch. Again, when you uh, look at some of the data that we get from the Institute of Medicine and, and from art and so on, um, I think it's amazing that anybody would want to maintain that paper status quo. The, the inherent error that that presents is, is significant. Mm -hmm. And I talk about, um, in Camille's centers, most of us have issues with missing labs, missing charts. And sometimes we don't, we don't realize you know, that, that the risk that, that alone presents. You know, the fact that a, a lab record, a lab that you order, um, you know, has to go through all these steps before it gets to you. 
each of them presenting a significant risk, risk for loss sort of thing. And so when you get to using the EHR, you want, you know, you, you look back and you think, what were we doing before and how could we have survived? Lastly, we didn't give them a tool and said, here, take it and run with it. We actually developed a tool that they, have, they were involved in the development process. So it was a great process to see them develop their own tools and technology was truly just a tool. Say, don't try to do it alone. Uh, become a part of a network uh, and, and you have uh, economies of scale as a result of that uh, and also in terms of the staff to support the operation. Uh, technology staff is expensive uh, and many of our centers would not be able to afford uh, and retain the staff that they need to operate the systems. Ordinance, we use the, uh, the term give up for the greater good uh, as we've gone through the years and that you know, occasionally there will be a, a situation where it may not be in the, in the immediate best interest of the center but it's in the best interest of the, of the network and ultimately the center uh, improves because of the, uh, if the network grows. I mean, we say we are they and they are us I and mean, the network really is one and the same with the center. So starting with the leadership, uh, there are a number of resources out there from the Bureau of Primary Health Care. There is a tremendous network of networks uh, like us uh, that are always will willing to help. Well, change is inevitable and we need to be able to adapt to a changing environment. And as, as technology has come on board, uh, we have seen the advantage of technology in the delivery of services, not only in terms of healthcare, but services in general to the, to the population.